In this video we're going to look at two different applications that are designed to look and check your operating system for the existence of a rootkit being installed on it. Now if you're not familiar with what rootkits are, they're pretty much an application that's designed to hide itself very well on your operating system, uh, hiding itself from detection that allows another person or application root privileges to your computer. And so they're pretty nasty and if you get one, I usually don't recommend trying to remove it. I usually recommend reinstalling the operating system from scratch because they are very difficult and sometimes impossible to remove. But finding them is a first step to see if we've got one. And now we've got two applications within Backtrack. So I'll go to Applications, I'll go to Backtrack, Forensics, Antivirus, Forensics Tools, and you'll see these are the two applications installed by default on Backtrack 5. First one, the Check Rootkit. I'm going to go ahead and open this one up. And we're going to take a look at this application. Now to run this application is quite simple. It's the period forward slash and this is to run the script and I need to type in the name of the script which is going to be chk rootkit. I'll go ahead and hit enter. And you're going to see that it's going to go through the application or go through the operating system and test at several different locations for the existence of a rootkit. And this is a fresh install of Backtrack 5 so it will not detect a rootkit on this. But we'll let this run and it should finish here shortly. Now it only takes a few minutes to actually run this command to check. And you'll notice if I scroll up here you'll see that there is no rootkits detected or it'll say nothing's found uh, through most of these things here. And so if you wanted to get a good idea of what this program is actually checking for, it's ideal to go to the website itself. And I'll go ahead and open up Firefox. We'll navigate to the website just to see it's chk rootkit.org and we we'll go ahead and hit enter and this is going to go ahead and give us on the home page a list of the worms or a list of the as well as a list of the rootkits that are installed or che check for installation of and so you'll see here there's quite a few of them it's actually 64 at the moment and, and all that it checks for and this is a good application to run just to check it only takes a few minutes of your time to see I'm going to go ahead and close this and what we're going to do is take a look at the other rootkit uh, detector, which is going to be called uh, Rootkit Hunter. I'll close this. Let's go back to Applications, Backtrack, Forensics, Antivirus Forensics, and here it is, the Rootkit Hunter. I'm going to open this. This program is a little bit more involved and uh, will take quite a bit longer as far as running. It should probably take about 20 to 25 minutes to run this through your program. And so what we're going to do is if I actually just type in RK Hunter, it's just going to go ahead and give me back the same screen. By default it just assumes that when you type in the program that it wants or it's going to give you the help or you're looking for the help. So we need to go ahead and look how to use this program. And there are two things that we're going to look at here. We're going to look at the check and this property update um, option as well but throughout, our, uh, throughout our program and actually we'll do three. We're going to also look at the update. To start with I'll do the update. It's always a good idea to run an update. And so I'm going to go back down here to, to RK Hunter, type that into the command prompt, two dashes and update. We'll go ahead and hit enter. And it will take a few minutes here, maybe about one to two minutes for it to run the update. And you can see that on my computer at the moment all my files have been updated so there are no updates available for this program. So I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, RK. Let's go ahead and type it in again. RK Hunter. And this time we're going to do dash, ja, dash, and the word check. Go ahead and hit enter. Now this is going to take quite a long time to run. This is what's going to take about the 20 to 25 minutes to run. And what it's going to do is you know, going to go through uh, some known files, known applications, and then also checking for rootkits and several of the things that are on your computer. And while it's doing that, you may see some warnings pop up, and a lot of these are going to be false positives. While it's checking for its known file types, you may see, uh, or, the, or the operating system you may be using may be doing things a little different than what uh, our Rootkit Hunter application thinks they should be running, or is programmed to, to determine how they're running. And so you will probably see a lot of false positives, a lot of warnings that come up. And so after our program runs, we'll take a look at a couple of these, but I'm going to go ahead and let this run and finish through. When we're all said and done, we'll come to this ending where it says System Checks Summary. Now I had to hit enter a few times to go through the process through each one of the checks that they've done through our application. If I scroll up here to the top, 
I'll see that I've got a couple warnings as we go through and you'll see different warnings and most of these are probably false positives basically what may have happened on some of these is that my backtrack operating system may have updated some of the um, files or may do a different way uh, run the application from a different folder or from a different script than what root, root hunter is looking at or wants to see and so they'll come up with a warning as a possibility of somebody has tampered with our applications and so what I really want to focus on is right here checking for the rootkits and you'll see that uh, throughout our rootkits it looks through that list of them there there has not been a rootkit found and so this is a pretty accurate application to try to find rootkits of course nothing is foolproof but this one does a very good job of trying to find some of the rootkits that are installed here and what we could do if I come to the end it gives me my summary here you can see that possible rootkits are zero now, I do have a couple files that are, they are suspect files that could be something wrong with them suspect applications as well and we're going to see about trying to eliminate that but before I do I want to check out this log file that's been created and you'll notice here the file path for it so if I do open up an application let's just open up a text editor here and navigate to that location I'll choose open file system there folder log folder and then I should find here there it is the log and so I'll double click on the log and I can see a log file of everything that's happened here as well and you'll see the same kind of results what we saw in the terminal uh, this one does give us some description on a few things and one of the things we'll see uh, when we go through this is that we need to create a file here it goes this warning right here uh, says that we probably should create this or run this, this option to create the file rkhunter.dat so you'll notice that we're going to do that here in a moment if I scroll down a couple of the other warnings that you may have seen on this one right here here's a warning and you'll see that it's just been the file says the file has been replaced uh, with uh, a different script and of course that it came up as a possibility of somebody tampering with our system so I've got this log file that I can always go back and reference and I'll go ahead and close the log file let's go ahead and close the text editor so let's go ahead and begin this next part so I'll begin by typing in RK Hunter, and we'll go ahead and type in prop upd for update property update go ahead and hit enter alright and so this program here has now just gone ahead and updated all the, all the files and if you look here I've got 165 files that it searched for it only found 132 files on this operating system and what it does is actually uses the programs and the files for all the items that it looked for and creates a hash for it that allows it to store in that database that dot dat file that we looked at. And I'll take a look at that file real quick. But what it does is it takes what is existing here and says, okay, this is what it, this is what I need to look for in my operating system. This is what the file should be without being modified and stores the hashes for all those to compare to the next time we run this uh, rootkit hunter. And so if I want to find that file, I'm just going to go to places I'll go to computer, go to file system, we'll go to the ver folder, the lib, the library, and I'll find the rootkit hunter database folder, the db folder that's listed there, and now we've got here it is, the rkhunter.dat. I'll just double click on it, and you'll find that it created this file for us as well as the hashes for each one of these files that are, or items that it was looking for. And this concludes the video on the rootkits, finding rootkits within the Backtrack operating system using the rootkit hunter as well as the check rootkit applications.